My coming in to being an astronaut was sort of a stair-step program. Uh, I had an opportunity to go to West Point, which was a, a f free education, and that was a very important consideration. And, and then when I graduated, I drifted over into the Air Force, became a pilot. One thing led to another. I was a test pilot at Edwards, and, uh, and, and that at that time was a, a good entry point uh, to the astronaut program. You know, you bring to a flight uh, 30 years of living on this dinky little planet and uh, whatever you've been able to put together and try to retain, all that I think goes into the preparation for a flight. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Then when Neil Armstrong stepped out onto the surface of the moon, that I think was kind of the peak of the interest that the American public had. Buildings like this do a lot to sustain that level of interest and, and, and that's one of the things that I think is very important about this beautiful surrounding, the National Air and Space Museum, which is a vital part of the Smithsonian Institution. The exploration of space will go One of the really nice things about Apollo was its objective was very clear. Believe President uh, Kennedy had said, put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. decade. I came to Washington sneaking up on 1976, and I used to run around town saying, museum on the mall by the bicentennial. And I'll take those three important facets of Apollo and try to transfer them to the construction of this building. And uh, it worked out well. We, we, we were supposed to open uh, July 4th, 1976, and we actually beat it by three days, July 1st, 1976. My name is uh, Mike Collins. Uh, retired for many years now, but back in 76, I was the director of this magnificent Air and Space Museum. <laughs> 